Good afternoon, friends of the Jose Manuel H. Garage channel. Today I'm going to make a rather special video for you, and it's about the problem that a lot of Lexus and Toyota models have. It doesn't matter the engine, and between the years 2002 and almost 2010, when you turn on the car, the problem they have is that, as you can see, when you turn on the car, the VCS and VCS off lights, as you've seen, go off. And look, the moment you start the car, I'm going to move it a little bit. The moment you start the car, you see, they turn on. Sometimes they turn on the first time, sometimes they turn on the second time, and sometimes they turn on immediately. But the VCS and VS lights, sorry, the versus SC and VSC off lights, these lights stay on. No matter how much we turn the VSC off here, you see, I turn it on several times and there's no way to turn it off. These lights have to do with the traction control. What's the problem? The problem is that sometimes using a bad error code reader, like this one could be the case. This one cost me like 15 euros. When using it, it does indeed read the error codes or whatever, but then it presents this problem. This problem is very common in these cars and from what I've been researching about it, hmm, there are many official car parts and such that change the AQ, that change the oxygen sensors, that change a lot of things based on the error codes they've read and so on, and the problem is still present. The owners spend a lot of money. And in the end the solution is very simple and very cheap. So I'm going to tell you how to solve it. Oh, what is the solution? The solution is to jumper two pins of uh, the error code reader or B2 which is right there. Look, this is a Lexus SC430 2005 model and the ODB2 connector is right here under the steering wheel. See? There we have it. Okay, so once the ODB2 connector is located, we have to make a bridge between two pins to permanently turn off and reset this problem with the lights on. Okay, now I'm going to tell you which two pins need to be bridged. Oh. I'm going to put the graphic here, the pin. Take into account the position of the B2 connector. We have to bridge the CG pin, which is number 4, and the TS pin, which is number 14. We have to see what the situation is, okay, of the widest part and the narrowest part of the connector. In this case, as you can see, the wider part is on our left. So then we're going to put the graphic this way, okay? So, pin 14 is the third from the top on our right and pin CU is the fifth from the top on our left, so we have to make a bridge between these two pins. Okay. We can make the bridge with a cable, with... I've read people who do it with a paper clip and such. I'm going to do it with this tool that I have, uh, that I also use to check the error codes of some motorcycles, especially Suzuki's. It's a tool for Suzuki's. So, this is simply a cable where in this position the circuit is open. Therefore there is no continuity and in this position the circuit is closed. Therefore there is continuity. To solve the problem we have to have the cable closed so that there is continuity, but it is safer to place the pins with the circuit open so that there are no problems and once they are correctly placed we can close the circuit. So, come on, I'm going to put the pins. I'm going to put it there. So we said that 14 is the one that is in the third position. Well, we have to count. 1, 2, 3 and place the cable. And then the 4 was in the 5th position, so we count here on the left. 1, 2, 3, 4 C to put the cable. Well, as you can see I have an open circuit, that is, there is no continuity and I have already placed the pins in their corresponding places.
in the third on our right side and in the fifth on our left side. Well, once we have made the jumper, but we have an open circuit, that is, as if we had not done it, the first thing we have to do, the first step, is to have the ignition off, completely turned off. Okay, the next step is to make the jumper. In our case it would be to close the circuit, so that there is continuity. Okay, we have already made the jumper. Okay, the third step is to put the car in the on position, but without starting the car. Third step is to put the ignition key in the on position but without starting. And wait 30 seconds, okay? For it to act you have to wait 30 seconds. Okay, the fourth step is to return the ignition key to the off position. And then the fifth step, once we have the key in the off position, is to remove the jumper. To remove the jumper more safely, what we do right now is open the circuit, which is as if we were removing the jumper. And once we have the circuit open, we can remove the pins. Well, now we remove the cables. Okay, perfect. So, the next step is to check that the lights do not turn back on, okay? Our VSC and VSC off lights do not turn back on. To do this we have to start the car. Let's start the car. Okay. No light and we are going to okay. Okay. Well, let's check. Now you see, there are no lights. I've already moved the car. Before, when you moved it, the lights would turn on. The problem is solved. Now I have this light on here that right now I don't know what it is. But I'm going to look in the user manual to see what it has. It was also on before, but it has nothing to do with what I was talking about in this video. Now what I'm going to try is pressing the VSC button, that is, traction control on and off, to see if it turns on and off. Let's see if that's the case or not. I press it, see, and it turns on and I press it and it turns off. Well, friends, well I've taken the car out on the road now to check that the lights do not turn on. Well, I'm going to put on my seatbelt, excuse me for a second. Okay, I continue driving and there are no lights on the dashboard. Problem solved. Well, friends, now what I'm going to do is run this cheap error code reader again. It cost me 15 euros to see if this was indeed what caused the lights to come on. And this is what causes the lights to come on. That's what I've researched, that's what I've read. And it's that the lights come on when you run over an error code reader. Well, not just a cheap one, but the vast majority of error code readers, apparently, can cause this fault. So don't panic, because if they read the error codes or fix the errors and this fault appears, you can see how easy it is to bridge the two pins that were involved and voila, the light goes off. So now I'm going to stop the car here for a second, I'm going to run the error code reader to see if this is indeed what's causing it. Okay, as you can see, I'm driving the car and I don't have those lights. Okay, I'm going to run the error code, the error code reader, to see if that's what's happening or not. Okay, to do this, what I do is stop the car, turn. The key to the on position. This is what tells me that there are no error codes. Okay, however, I'm going to delete it. Even though there are no error codes, I'm going to delete it. Okay, 
I turn off the key, remove the connector and now I'm going to start the car again to see if the error code appears again or not. As I suspected, the VSC and VSC off have appeared again. The lights again. This doesn't work again. I turn it on, it doesn't go away. Then with this reader, when passing the reader it causes this error. I'm going to do the bridge again and I'm going to try it with another reader that I have, which is via Bluetooth. Let's see if the same thing happens to me with that one. And then the last step was to turn off, remove the bridge and test. Well, also taking advantage of the 30 seconds passing I have already discovered, I didn't know, I'm a bit of a hick, that this little light here that stayed on was the tire pressure. So now as I go up home to try with the other connector, which is the Bluetooth connector, I inflate the tires and see if that light also disappears. Okay. I think the 30 seconds have already passed, so I'll turn the key to the off position, remove the jumper, and try again. No, I have. Well, as you can see, I'm already driving the car. The light has gone out and everything, and once again it has been corrected by following the entire methodology. I'm going to do it now with this device. Finally, to see if it turns on or not, and thus reconfirm that the problem arises when reading the error codes with the different devices, okay. And I'll take advantage of this and inflate the tires because this is to turn off this light. Oh. First of all, what I'm going to do is inflate the tires to 2 with 3, EH, or 33P6. 2 with 3 kilograms or 33 p6 i have to take all four wheels if the pressure is going to be less than 160. since i can't go over 160 for the points i'm going to put it at 2.3 okay whether the car is with just one passenger or if it's full the manual says that 2.3 for the front left wheel is indeed it was the rear right wheel that was below two Okay, I no longer have any lights on the instrument panel. I'm to do it with the with this Bluetooth reader that connects to the phone. We've already connected the Bluetooth reader. Okay, let's connect with the mobile phone. And now let's verify that the connections are made correctly. We do the adapter test and the test tells me everything is okay. Okay, that Bluetooth is activated, that the adapter is connected, that the adapter has been connected to the EQ adapter and that everything is okay. Let's read the error codes, if it has them or not, which is here in Fold's code. Let's click on it and it's reading. Sorry for the focus because no matter how I do it, it's focusing badly. Okay, it says it's reading 32, 34%. Let's wait until 100%. Says it hasn't found any error codes. Oh. Okay, now we're going to start the car and see if we've had any problems with this reader. Oh, no, we're going to do the same thing we did before. We're going to erase the error codes, even if we don't have any. We're going to erase the error codes. Okay, we tell it that erasing the AQ errors gives us a series of warnings about what erasing the AQ errors implies, which it's a good idea to write down, and so on. We tell it okay. Now we're going to start the car to see if they appear or not. Let's see, let's start the car. Okay, now let's see if the lights come on or not. Let's move the car a little and see what happens. Let's see, it's already very dark and leaving the house is a bit complicated.
Well, no, look with this reader, with this reader. Let's see, I'm going to try it. Well, it didn't happen with this reader, right? I mean, the problem didn't happen with this Bluetooth reader. The other reader did. Okay, what I've investigated is that there are a lot of readers that have this problem, but not all of them. So, if you have this problem of having the VCS permanently on and the VCS off and it's happened very immediately after having the error codes read, a car checkup, an oil change, and the service intervals reset, or whatever. You know that the problem is solved as easily as bridging pin 4 and pin 14 of the ODB2 connector. And that's it, with the procedure we followed. Well, hey, friends, finally I would like to tell you that in this case I would really like it if you liked the video and found it useful, you would give me a like. Well, bye and see you in the next video, bye bye.